Come on, is that the world <clears throat> counterfeit? Now, whether it's buying knockoff sunglasses or counterfeit handbags or replica shoes, watches, reproduction of world famous paintings, we know we're buying fakes, right? None of us are foolish enough that we're gonna buy something of real value for that little price. When our kids were younger, we would go on a cruise. And one of the things they always do on the cruise, the boys save their money for Folkleys. Zach would buy every color of, for $80, you know, 20 or, you know, five for 80. He'd get five pair of Oakley sunglasses. Nobody believed those were Oakleys. Michelle would get a handbag. She's got a, I mean, she, if those were real in her closet, we could retire. The fake handbag, it's crazy. I have a diamond encrusted Rolex, pearl face, diamonds, diamonds, in the Rolex store, this watch would cost about $18,000. My father bought it in Chinatown for $20. I know this is not a real Rolex. And yet some of you walked up and said, Pastor, I'm a little surprised you're wearing that diamond watch and preaching this weekend. Well, give me $20 and I'll buy you one just like it. <laughs> Nobody believes it's real. <clears throat> now, when we pay for something and that we believe is real and we find out it's fake, come on, we know it's fake because we're paying less. It's either hot, like we saw in the van, or it's fake. We're settling for something less than the original artist, designer, creator intended and formed out of a genius something quality. But what if you bought something, you bought this watch and you paid $18,000 for it only to find out it's cubic zirconians and it's fake. You'd be bummed out, wouldn't you? Well, in the first pages of the, new, of, the, of the Bible, we find the original creator, the architect and the designer of all that there is, creating his greatest masterpiece, or what we believe to be the masterpiece. And that's saying something, because he's created the universe, the earth, clouds, rivers, oceans, mountains. He's done this incredible design work. And then he creates man and woman. I love the fact you created man and God and man's hanging out. And God says, dude, you, you, you gotta have something else. You, it's not good for man to be alone. And he made woman, I think one of his greatest gifts. Are you with me? I would not wanna live in a world full of just a bunch of dudes. Hairy, nasty, stinking, hobbit feet dudes. I don't wanna be that. <clears throat> I'm grateful. So in Genesis chapter two, the man said, now this is bone of my bones, the flesh of my flesh. She should be called woman because she was taken out of man. For this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother. Did you catch that? Leave the father and mother. Some of y'all need to get on some of that. And shall become what? One flesh, and the man is both naked and we're not ashamed. That's the design. That's the, that's the way marriage is designed. That's the way sexuality is designed. It is the original masterpiece by God. And this matters why? Because when you know the truth about relationships, you will not be easily fooled by knockoffs, counterfeits, something less than the original. Are you with me? So everything else we hear, everything else we see, everywhere else that are offering these reviews on relationships, anything at any form, at any other price is still a knockoff of the original. Are you with me? Those forgeries, those knockoffs that are trying to fool us into settling less in our marriages or worse in our homes for divisive, divorced, destined families. So in this series, we've entitled Fooling Around. We are, we are gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna uncover some scars and some scabs, but we're, we're, we want everyone to, to really search all your relationships because we're not just gonna deal with marital relationships, but all of your relationship for marks of freedom, devotion, proof of protection and wisdom that that relationship will last. Father God, you created relationships. You are a God that is in relationship. You created us with a heart for relationships. 
You got relationships can make life incredible. And yet, God, they can provide an opportunity for our hearts to be ripped out, thrown onto the ground, and stomped into a mud hole. Lord, there are people hurting. This is going to be a difficult message for some people to hear. And yet, God, we will exalt your truth regardless of the culture, regardless of what's popular. We will always stand on the original design of the creator God. In Jesus' name we pray. And all God's people said, welcome to all of our campuses. Come on, Farragut, crushing it over there. Come on, all of our campuses. God behind bars online. We love you. We're so thrilled that you're with us. By the way, we are thrilled that you're going after your one. And if you say, well, what is my one? It means you weren't here last weekend and you need to go online, go to the app and download and watch last week because it is vital for the future of Faith Promise. And so go back and grab it. Uh, If you missed it, by the way, I'm taking a group to Israel in October and a lot of people have asked about it. If you will contact my assistant Jody this week, I would hurry. Uh, I think there's only 50 spots, maybe less. If you wanna be a part, she'll give you all the details. It'll be incredible. And so it's just gonna be a life-changing Incredible thing. Now, maybe you're here and you're not sure about faith. You're not sure you even believe that this Bible's true. <clears throat> you don't know what you think about the church. Man, we're thrilled that you're here. And we believe God's truth about relationships and sexuality are, are, are God's desire for everyone. And we believe it's God's design for everyone. So if you want to experience all God has, then we want you to see the showpiece of relationships and sex. We'll be talking about it in this series. You don't want to miss it. The way God originally designed it. Are you here? So you may, some of you may not understand what we're talking about. You may not agree, but we want you to see the love of God in the middle of it. You know, we want you, his perfect love and will for your life. We want you to consider taking your next step with God. And we're gonna give you an opportunity in a few minutes to do that. And we're, we're trying to provide resources to help you, not just the sermon, not just small group curriculum, but we're trying to add more and more. And so we have a marriage event coming up. You heard about it, uh, Amore Night. It's free, childcare. There's a QR uh, code on the screen if you wanna come. Uh, it, it's gonna be how to enrich your marriage. It's gonna be, incre- it's gonna be incredible. It's free, we're doing it for you. It's February 17th. And so if you will go on, sign up, it'll be incredible. Now, maybe you're here and you are the child of a divorce. Maybe you're here and you've been through a divorce. You, if, and if you've been through divorce, you know the damage and destruction that a divorce causes. Is that correct? <clears throat> now, I want you to hear me because I'm gonna get some ugly emails. I won't read them and I won't care to listen to me. God is the God of grace and forgiveness. God is the God of the second chance. Do you hear me? And knowing that probably over half of the congregation this weekend has been through a divorce does not negate the truth of the word of God that must be taught regardless of the culture. This message is not about guilt. It is about walking in God's best. And regardless of what is popular, regardless of what the world offers, we will never at Faith Promise backstroke from the truth, whether it's popular or not. Are you with me? So we're gonna walk through that. Now, if you've been through a divorce, Pastor Zach and Rachel's podcast this week deals with it, an incredible story of a promiser. You can take a picture of that and go to that this week and understand. Now, let me add one more ca- caveat. Okay, if you're listening, say I am. I am not telling you to stay where you are in danger. Too many preachers have talked to a husband or a wife into staying in a home where they ended up being abused, murdered, or hurt. That is not what I'm saying. Do you hear me? If you heard me say amen. amen. All right, there are biblical grounds for divorce and, and there, all that kind of stuff. 
And so, but, but we're going to give God's best. And so uh, some of the stuff, if we're, we're talking about divorce, you've been through, okay, we're, are, are we good? Harvard University did an 84-year study on happiness. 84, that's a long study. And the study, and at the end of 84 years, the number one indicator whether you would be happy or not is your relationships. You have good relationships, even though circumstances are bad, you're walking through it together, right? And, and, but, but if you have relationships that are bad, even when life is good, life sucks. Relationships make us or break us, and that's what this series is about. Every year, we roll back around and we talk about relationships. And, and so today, what does God say about the relationship of marriage? What does God say about divorce? I'm not gonna get through it. I'm gonna tell you now, though my goal is not to finish this message. My goal is for us to connect with God and see God's real plan. Are you with me? And so we're gonna look at faults and some flaws and what happens and what God says in a culture where marriages are falling apart. Now, I want you to know something. I pray for you every day. I pray if you're married for your marriage, be rock solid, spirit filled, great sex, incredible relationship. Me and my pastor praise I have great sex, absolutely. If you brought your kids in this weekend, this week is not about sex, I wouldn't in a couple of weeks. Your marriage, your family, and if you're single and you wanna be married, I pray for an incredible mate. Incredible mate. Now, that means you need to be incredible. If you're horrible, God can't send you somebody incredible, so grow. <laughs> Amen? Come on, somebody. Now, we go, to, we go to the splitting of the Old and the New Testament. In the splitting, we find the prophet Malachi, who will speak for God. God, th God speaks through him. He doesn't speak for 400 years, then Jesus comes. He's preaching to about 50,000 people Re recently returned exiles from Babylon where Daniel was taken and all that kind of stuff. And, and God begins to speak about divorce and how God sees it. Malachi chapter two, verse 13 and 14. The other thing you do, you cover the altar with tears, with weeping, with groaning, because he no longer regards the offering or accepts it with favor from your hand. Yet you say, for what reason? Because the Lord has been a witness between you and the wife of your youth, against whom you have dealt treacherously, though she is your companion and your wife by covenant. See, God looks at marriage as a covenant, not a contract you sign with the state of Tennessee. There is a massive, a contract is easily broken. There are stipulations to break a contract, but a covenant is much more difficult. So God's people have come back after 70 years in Babylon. They get back and they realize God's not with us. He's not accepting our offerings. He's not blessing our crops, our flocks. He's not, and they begin to weep because God wasn't blessing. Have you ever looked around and realized God's not there in power? Have you ever asked God why? Why, God, why is my life such a wreck? Why is my marriage in disaster? This is not what I signed up for. Why is my home like a war zone instead of a sanctuary of the Holy Ghost? Why, why, God, why? And that's what these people are saying. God, we don't understand why. And God says, because of two reasons. A, you're not faithful to the wife of your youth, and B, you're not faithful to God. So Christ followers, let me ask you a question. Have you surrendered your life up to the fullness of Jesus? I mean, have you surrendered or are you being, or are, you, are you faithful to him? Have you fully surrendered to his ways? Are you walking? Husbands and wives, if you're Christ followers, are you being faithful to each other? Have you fully surrendered to each other? This is not just about adultery. You could cheat on your spouse with pornography. You can cheat your spouse out of time because you spend it everywhere else. You can cheat your spouse out of emotional vulnerability. This is very difficult for me. When somebody asks me, how do you feel? I just said, I don't understand the question. Because 
I was abandoned at three years old. And then I was abused. And somehow I learned to lock away my emotions. And now I don't get it. And there's nothing more my wife enjoys than saying, how do you feel? And me answering that. And she'll say, Chris, how do you feel? If you say you're a Vulcan, I'm going to throw punch you. <laughs> so you know what I do many times? I make something up. Because I've locked my emotions up so tight, I don't know how to unlock them. I don't know how to understand them. But my lack of emotional vulnerability hurts my wife. Are, are y'all with me? Are you cheating on your spouse with thoughts about another person? Are you cheating your spouse out of an incredible sex life? Because that's God's plan. And he goes on, verse 15. But no one has done so who has a remnant of the spirit. And what did that one do while he was seeking a godly offspring? Take heed then to your spirit. Let no one deal treacherously against the wife of your youth. For I hate what? I hate what? But you didn't know something. Listen, if you're listening to Sam, he didn't say I hate divorcees. He said a divorce because God knew in the original sign the downfall, the pain that divorce would cause in, in, in the hearts of people. Are you with me? And so God didn't say I hate people that are divorced. He said I hate divorce. Now, in this, in, in this passage in the Old Testament, it was speaking of Jewish men who were, leaving their, who were leaving their older wives who'd been married to a long time for younger women. Have you guys seen that in our culture? Some old dude? Are you with me? Some old dude my age with a hot 20-year-old honey? I know one thing. He's got money. Are you with me? And so, but in this time when, when Jesus is there and Malachi and all that, there were so many divorces for no good reason that something, that something had to be done. And God warns us that marriage should not be entered into it lightly or ill-advisedly or unprepared, but reverently, discreetly, and the fear of God. See, listen, are you ready? Divorce is not God's design. Now, I know this message, listen, hurts the hearts of some people because you've walked down this road. Guilt is not our desired effect. Are you with me? We want you to see God's design and God's best. So what are we supposed to do with something that today has become so stylish, so trendy, so standard, divorce, that there are television channels, shows, professional journalists, dedicated to do one thing, keep up with who's getting divorced in Hollywood. That's what I've, I've learned recently. This it's devastated my heart. I'm gonna be honest with you. I'm not real in touch with my emotions, but this crushed me to the core. That I found out that people have now divorce parties. Divorce parties. And we celebrate what God hates. I watched a faith promise small group have a divorce party and put it online. Now I understand that divorce is gonna happen. See, and then people ask me, hey pastor, I don't understand why we don't see the miracles that we see in the Bible. This is why. Because if we'll get online and celebrate a divorce, can I tell you something? We have zero fear of God. Are you with me? Are, are you with me? And so, and so it's just where we are in the culture, but we don't get our cues from culture, we get them from Christ. What if the trouble with marriage has nothing to do with the institution, but it has to do with people that treat marriage cheaply? You ever estimated the value of your marriage? Because, listen, I wouldn't be where I am today were it not for God, number one, and Michelle, number two. I wouldn't have gone as far. I would have stopped. Michelle built a fire under me. She prayed for me. She pushed me. She encouraged me. I would never have gotten to where I am without Michelle. 
I extraordinarily value marriage and never actually knew it could be this good. It's incredible. It's just, it's wonderful. Anybody believe marriage is wonderful? Come on, somebody. What we cannot do is allow the trends and the fashions of our culture to convince us that marriage is overrated. When God's word says it's not overrated. So now, good news. Divorce rates have dropped in the last 20 years in America. Isn't that incredible? But marriage rates have dropped by 50%. So we're not getting divorced because we're not getting married. We're shacking up. We're shacking up. Are you with me? And we're going to talk about this later. But if you don't want to be married, you don't get to have sex. See, sex is like buying a pair of shoes. You get a left and a right. You don't go buy a box, get one. There are two. Are you with me? And so there's just a design by God. And But what we've looked at today, we believe the culture that, well, marriage is out of date. It's like an old junky handbag. It's, it's boring. I can have sex and I can have a family. I don't have to be married. In America, every 42 seconds, there's another divorce. Every 42 seconds, it rolls. Now, researchers tell us that today in our current trends, 41% of all first marriages went into divorce. And the average, the average marriage that is a divorce lasts eight years. See, we, and so, you know, people in Jesus' day were, were, were dumping, were, were in heavily involved in divorce, heavily involved in, you know, all kind of other, all kind of other issues. And so Jesus walks into it in Matthew chapter 19 and does so with, you know, a significant uh, hammer. Some Pharisees came to Jesus testing him. Is it lawful for a man to divorce his wife for any reason? They thought either way he answered, he'd be wrong. Either way, so they thought they had him. You don't trap the word with the word. The word became flesh and dwelt among us. You don't mess up the word with the word. I love it when these peanut heads are trying to mess up Jesus and he just rolls it around on them. They always look stupid. You'd think they'd learn. Is it lawful for a man to divorce his wife for any reason at all? He answered and said, have you not read? He that created them male, he that created them for beginning, made them male and female. And for this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to, a man shall leave his father and mother some of you haven't cut the apron strings and your marriage is struggling because you'd rather be back with mommy and daddy than when your spouse. Leave your father and mother. Be joined to the wife. Quit looking at each other right now. Stop that. I see y'all. <laughs> Elbows. Hey, he's talking to you. Stop. Let the Holy Ghost do his job, would you please? Let me in the spirit bring some conviction. <laughs> okay, here we go. <laughs> so they should no longer be two, but one flesh. What God has joined together, let no man. See, Jesus believed in marriage. How about you? I know our trends. I know the culture. I know people say marriage is, is old, timey. It's out of touch. You know, we got new way to have relationships and new styles of relationships. We need flexibility. We, we, we don't have to be that committed to, a, to oneness. We need more openness to escape or explore or to allow that relationship to expire. Now, the unfair thing was that only men could divorce women and women could divorce men here biblically. Are you with me? They, they, couldn't, they couldn't do that. And so because even though marriages were pre-reigned in Jesus' day or Malachi's, they had already developed prenups. Now, let me tell you the number one reason in America, why divorcing couples say they're being, that they're divorcing, and it's because of lack of commitment. So I, I'm, I'm only about 30% done. I'm so sorry. You'll have to go online and, and catch the podcast and all that stuff. Here, here's, uh, here's the real issue. Jesus goes on in that, and they say, then why did Moses allow them to give their wives a certificate of divorce and send them away? And Jesus said, from the beginning, it has not been that way. But Moses allowed divorce because of the hardness of your heart. Amen. So there's not a problem with marriage. 
We've all got a heart problem. Don't we? We got a heart problem. And so many of us give up instead of giving in. I give in to Michelle now. I love Michelle so much, I don't have to win an argument. I just let her win. You say, well, she's going to win anyway. No, no, she could never beat me in an argument, ever. (laughs) Why? Because I'm a rear end. And I will hit so below, below the belt on her. I will devastate her. It's what I did for the first 10 years of marriage. She didn't win one fight. Because I wouldn't stop until she was on the couch crying. That's crushed her. I'm so thankful to God that when I was a horse's rear end, I was born again, I was a pastor. A lot of pastors, horses, rear ends. I'm so grateful she didn't give up, she gave in. And that's the spirit of God. God, do something with Chris. He didn't want to be like this. This is all he's ever seen. Rageaholic stepdad, sexual abuse. This is all he's ever seen. God, would you step into Chris's life? God, would you open his eyes? And God did that. And I began to realize this incredible gift God gave me called Michelle. And oh, I was so broken over what I'd done. And now she can win. I love her too much. I don't want to beat her. Are you with me? Are you giving up? Are you giving in? Are you faithful? Or has God shown you some things? Maybe you need to step up your game. Just a minute, I'm gonna pray. And all around this room, there are crosses and sticky notes. Maybe you wanna write some of those sticky notes, stick it up on a cross. Maybe you wanna come take Lord's Supper or come to a prayer council, but listen, listen. Let's give in before we give up. In Ephesians 5, a little mutual submission. There are things I don't want to do. I do them because Michelle wants to do them. There are things I disagree with, not moral, but just other things. And I do it because that's her preference. Her birthday's this month. And I try to make it a secret, but she's too smart. Take her out of town on a trip for her 60th birthday. What a gift. Do you value your marriage? God. This message, you know the struggle I had. You know how I'm having to hold back uh, just in my heart. God, there are people living in a home that's worse home. There are people struggling. God, you, that's not your plan. Your plan is for marriage to rock. Have an incredible life to have our burdens because we divide them and double our joy because we're together. And so God, in these next few moments, Holy Ghost, would you clearly speak in power? And God, would you make our families rock, solid, spirit-filled? Spirit of God, would you fill this room? 